Hello, my name is Mary Solomon. I am the owner and curator of the Lace Museum Detroit. Um, some of our visitors come and they are lay persons, which means they are not uh, associated with lace making. However, they are in awe and fascination of handmade lace, especially antique handmade lace. I'm often asked the question about Irish crochet lace, which is uh, a very beautiful, bright, pleasant, a heavier style, three-dimensional lace. It's a fascinating um, phenomenon of lace history because during the 1840s in Ireland, the potato famine was uh, causing a high death rate. Um, women, especially in the cottage industry, were losing money, uh, they're losing family members. Um, there was great economic hardship. So women could have the opportunity, whether it was at a convent, whether it was through uh, family relief schemes, charitable organizations, to learn how to do uh, Irish crochet lace. Irish crochet lace uses one instrument. These are probably very similar to the crochet hooks that were used to make Irish crochet lace. These are actually from probably the mid-1850s. They're made out of bone, which would have been a material that was accessible to these impoverished women uh, in their farming communities. So this is a one instrument type of lace. And again, I'm being very simplistic here. This is, uh, this is information for the lay person who is not a lace maker. So we have one instrument, and what they're doing is they are crocheting which is a technique that you can certainly uh, research more on if you're interested in that. They are creating motifs such as this. So they're creating something uh, that's going to be later connected. This is uh, another motif that's being created by an Irish crochet hook, which is something that is this information, this uh, piece of instrument. You can see on this collar, or bertha, so to speak, uh, all of the different motifs that are here. We have the um, a shamrock, we have the Irish rose, we have uh, this particular piece has grapes in it. There is um, floral designs, folk art. So each piece of these, and, and of course a thistle is a heavy, a heavy motif in Irish crochet. Each one of these motifs is created individually with one instrument. It is later, uh, they're later attached according to a pattern with a, almost a chain stitch, uh, I'm going to say a chain stitch uh, lattice type. So it creates uh, this complete piece but it's made separately with one instrument. Now if you can understand um, and this is this this is exactly the type of uh, thread they would have used. They would have used this this piece is in linen, this piece is in linen, this piece is in silk. So they use uh, fine threads, uh, heavier threads, depending on what it's used for, whether fashion or for uh, bed linens or table linens. Now, to more understand the difference between this type of lace and what we call bobbin lace, we're going to take everything aside here. And we're going to leave the one instrument lace on this side. On this side, in contrast to something that is a one instrument lace, Irish crochet, is bobbin lace. Here you can see a bobbin lace making pillow. You can see all of the instruments that are being used to make this type of lace. This is uh, an example of uh, Russian bobbin lace. And on this pattern, she's using all of the bobbins to create this. Um, a bobbin lace making or pillow lace making or bone lace is made from numerous uh, instruments such as this. These are um, bobbins for lace making. So this is in sharp contrast to what Irish crochet lace would be. And of course there are all sorts of different needle laces that are using a needle or a tatting shuttle or a crochet hook. But to better understand um, how this is constructed, um, you have to have a, you know, a demarcation between these two different types of lace. This is an extraordinary piece of Irish crochet lace, probably circa uh, 1860 to 1880. You can see all the different motifs. This is a large piece that would have been made for a flounce for a gown. This would have brought a uh, great economy to Ireland um, and helping with the economic strife. 
Um, this is made out of linen. This is a fantastic example. This piece is a little later, probably around 1900. It's made out of silk. Still just an absolutely extraordinary piece. In closing, from a historic perspective, uh, historians believe that around the 1920s, Irish crochet lace had fallen out of fashion, um, favorable fashion, I should say. So the times are changing. Women are not wearing these small cuffs. They're not wearing collars that were made. This was all predominantly um, Irish crochet pieces, such as uh, color pieces like this that would have been lapettes on a Victorian gown. So around the 1920s, again, um, history tells us that Irish crochet was falling out of favor. Um, of course, now we're, we're repurchasing it and where museums have it um, throughout, from the, from the Metropolitan Museum in New York to the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C., of course, the Victorian Albert, uh, the great museums in Europe have a collection of Irish crochet for historic reasons and also for the, um, you know, the phenomenon of the talent of the lace makers. If you have any questions uh, or comments, please visit us at thelacemuseumllc.com. Um, we certainly invite comments and also um, to recap, this is something uh, that we are um, explaining today as a, from a very uh, simplistic uh, perspective. Thank you.